So I was born and raised in Hollywood, California. Seriously. That is my mom and that is my dad. Yeah, my dad uh, is a manager to a lot of famous, iconic actors and entertainers and um, like Jim Morrison, and this is him with Mick Jagger. Please note his baby blue Adidas matching jumpsuit. No. And that is my mom. She was a model and an actress, and this is her on chips. And um, yes, she got to make out with Eric Estrada. So <laughs> just. Anyway, so just like any other teenager, I wanted to rebel. But my rebellion was a little different from from the norm because I went to Beverly Hills High School and I grew up around the craziness of Hollywood. My rebellion was I wanted to go to youth group. Um, I would literally lie to my parents and say, I'm going to party, I'm going to this party, but I was really going to youth group. And um, I know, weird. But I also wanted to rebel from the vanity, all the vanity that I saw in the entertainment industry. So it was just the normal thing to do. I grew up acting. And um, so, for instance, this is a, a movie poster, a Danny DeVito movie I did a few years ago. I'm the brunette. But that is, that's just my face, but not my body. They cut and pasted my face. They edited it. I didn't even wear that outfit ever. I saw it, and I was like, who? I never wore that. I don't know who that is. Um, anyway, so the rebel in me decided to go around the country and I started taking thousands of pictures of people holding up signs that said things like this. Learning to love my cankles. Um, my cellulite is hot. My, my acne is sexy. You know, my scar saved my life. My chemo fried hair is beautiful, etc. cetera. And um, people started sending me their pictures and it went on and on and on. I did it for years and years and years. And then I started writing songs about it. Then I made an album about it. Then I started touring and this and that. And um, you know, at the merch table, you sell your CDs and and I made t-shirts that said, love your flaws, and little bags that said, love your flaws, and the whole thing. And uh, one day, uh, I was passing through New York, and I was wearing a cool hotel key around my neck. I just put it on my, my necklace. I thought it looked cool. So I went to a locksmith one day, and I said, hey, can you engrave love your flaws on the, the key? And while you're at it, I saw these old used keys over here. Hey, can you engrave other inspiring words like hope, strength, love, courage, etc.? So he did. And then I started making them and selling them on tour. And as you can see, I'm a very professional jewelry maker because those are my cuticle clippers on a plane, an airplane tray, and my tweezers. And um, very professional. I went to Fitum. I didn't go to Fitum, but uh, it's Fashion Institute. And anyway, so basically, I started making these necklaces, and every night from the merch table, they would sell out more than my CDs. And I was like, "Thanks, guys. I'm really glad. I just played you all my songs. I, you know, told you my soul and all my issues, and you just bought these freaking key necklaces. Thanks. Great. Okay. So I knew there was something there. So in between each song, I kind of would tie it into the Love Your Flaws. Like, okay, I want you guys to get a key that reminds you that you're, you're special. You're one of a kind, just like these keys. Uh, um, you know, you might feel old, used, discarded, flawed, just like these keys. Um, so get one. And then embrace, I want you to wear it and embrace that word on there until you meet somebody that you feel needs the message on there more than you. And I want you to pay it forward to them. And then come back and write me the story of why you gave it away. So stories started pouring in. I'll go to this one. So basically, you know, people would write in, I gave my, my key to somebody who was about to commit suicide. I gave them my key that said courage. And then I gave my fight key to somebody who um, has cancer. And then she, that woman gave her fight key to someone else in the cancer ward, etc. Or, you know, it was crazy. So I, all these stories, they were just coming like crazy because we just started selling thousands and thousands and thousands of keys. And I could have just left it at that, I could have been like, oh, this is a great business model. I can just settle here and make a website. This will be great. Very positive and cute jewelry. Um, but I knew there was a missing link. I knew I wanted the money to go to charity, but I didn't know what. So I waited. I waited. I was like, oh, maybe I could do proceeds of this could go to this. Proceeds of this could go to that. No, no, no. It's not right. Waited for the missing link for six months. So one day, I was walking down Hollywood Boulevard, leaving church, and I was crying, and I was like, what, what is the meaning of life? What is the point of all this? I just, uh, I'm bursting, with like, I want to help, I want to change the world, but what can I do? I don't know. And I, and I saw this uh, couple. They were under an umbrella, sitting in the rain, holding a sign that said, ugly, broken, hungry. So I went up to them, I was like, why? Why does your sign say that? What's your story? Blah, blah, blah. And I fell in love with them. And I canceled my plans that night. And I, and I said, do you guys want to go to dinner? Let's go to dinner. So we went to dinner. I bought them some wine and beer. And I know maybe that's not necessarily kosher, but I felt great about it. And we had a good time. 
And I was not thinking about the giving keys at all. And then two hours into it, I said to the girl, Sarah, I said, I really like your necklace. And she said, oh, thanks. I like making jewelry on the street. And I was like, this is my aha moment. Do you guys want to be my business partners? And they were like, what? Yeah, what? So then... Um, so then the next day, I went to the locksmith, and I bought the engraving equipment. It was like $300, and ordered it from, I don't remember. And then I went to Pet Boys and bought hammers, and then we started meeting up in alleyways. And it looked like we were doing drug deals, because I would pull up in my car and roll down my window, hand them cash, and they would hand me paper bag full of stuff. And yeah, and then sometimes they would deliver the keys in a very creative fashion like this. Like, that was actually an old, used microwavable package. On the other side was macaroni and cheese. And they were very creative because they cut little slits. You can't really see the picture. They cut slits at the top so they wouldn't get tangled. So, and that was actually, those were for, um, it was a rap party of a show that I was doing for all the actors. And I brought that into this like swanky place. Like, yeah, and it kind of smelt a little bit, but it was okay. I was like, these people made, never mind, they're just necklaces. Um, anyway, so then. We couldn't keep up with the orders. We got into all these swanky stores, like Fred Siegel and this and this and this. We were selling thousands. It was crazy. I, we were all freaking out. I was like, let's hire more friends and let's go to the projects and Skid Row. And it was, don't, it was, it was crazy for, for a little bit there. Um, but then I, I found out about the United Way and we partnered up with them and the Transitional Home Path. And um, we started hiring people um, from, from there. And, um, oh, I didn't even say little by little, they start saving enough money, um, Rob and Sarah, um, to stay in a motel. Then little by little start taking GD classes. Then they got their own apartment. And then Rob, he ended up getting 98 and 99 on his GED, which was incredible. And he was raised on the street. His parents still live, live under a bridge in San Diego. And it was like, it's so interesting to see that there was literal gold inside of these people. And sometimes they just needed a little oomph. And it was crazy to see what, what came out. And so then we ended up hiring 10 people at one point, 10 people that were trying to transition out of homelessness. And five of them got completely off the street in their own apartments and everything, um, just from engraving keys. And some of them we'd pay hourly. Some of them we would pay per key per, you know, word, per this and that. So then this is Jeff and Norma. They actually met um, by pounding out the keys and they fell in love and now they're engaged. No big deal. Just, I love them. I just want to, I know this is awkward. I just want to stare at them right now on the screen. Anyway, back to what I'm talking about. So my encouragement to you all today is this. Keep your eyes open to all the needs you see around you. They're, they're, they're all over the place. Um, this is a quote um, from Mother Teresa that I just found this morning. I wrote on my hand, do not wait for leaders. Do it alone, person to person. It's, it's very simple. It could be as simple as you see somebody that's hungry, get them some food. If you see somebody that's cold, give them your blanket. I'm sure you have a bunch just sitting in your closet. And yeah, it's, it's very simple, but don't do it because oh, you're trying to come up with an innovative new organization or I want to become a social entrepreneur, so I'm going to become passionate about this or I want to start a nonprofit or, you know, coming up with this thing. No, I think it needs to be based on just actual, you actually care about humans and it has to be real and genuine love. I think it's our responsibility as humans to take care of each other. I think it's our duty as humans to care for people when we're weak and broken. And I think that is the key, no pun intended, <laughs> um, to growing leaps and crossing over boundaries of social status and prejudice and complacency and um, narcissism. I think just keep your eyes open. There are locks all around you and maybe you hold the key to someone else's freedom. Thank you. So I'm going to sing a song that I wrote um, called Cracked Me Open, and hopefully you all can relate a, a little bit. I took a walk down alley streets angels wouldn't dare to be crossed a man tears in his eyes 
Dropped a needle by his side It was a look I recognized So thank you for the bumps and bruises All the roads nobody chooses Didn't know I could be broken Until you came and cracked me up Steel was so safe I couldn't feel. Saw a woman beneath the light, the vacancy there in her eyes. It was a look I recognized. Thank you for the bumps and bruises. All the roads nobody chooses. Didn't Took my hand and we watched them fall. I didn't need them after all. So thank you for the bumps and bruises. All the roads nobody chooses. Didn't know I could be broken till you came. Till you came and cracked me open. Thank you guys so much. Have a great day.